Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my kitchen, Cooking with Gerald. Today, I'm making some fried chicken wings, um, breaded fried chicken wings. Um, usually, I do fry my chicken wings naked, which means with no flour and no seasoning on them. And then I season them accordingly after they are finished cooking um, with like a buffalo sauce, lemon pepper sauce, or whatever the case may be. So, in order to get started, I have my chicken. It's been washed and clean, and it's been brining um, for the last 24 hours. I like to cook to put my chicken in a brine. I usually like to do it about two to three days. I like to cook my chicken in a brine and I usually like to do it about three to four days beforehand, um, before cooking it. And what I'll do normally is I'll put the chicken in a brine with salt and what other ever flavors that I'm actually, or seasonings that I'm actually using, um, like the cayenne pepper or Creole seasoning, whatever seasonings you would normally use to season the chicken with is what I would normally put in the brine in addition to the salt. But I actually put a little bit extra salt. Um, it's going to seem like you would think it would be salty, but it's not going to be. Because after you finish with the brine, you're going to rinse the chicken off and then you're going to re-season it. So I have the meat in a brine. I didn't put anything, any other seasonings except for the salt in here. So I'm going to rinse this off and go ahead and prepare my... Um, my flour, my seasoned flour. I have some self-rising flour, some pepper. I have an all-purpose seasoning that I made that has um, pepper, um, what else is in there? Accent, um, onion powder, garlic powder, and some other things in there. I also have paprika, some poultry seasoning, a little cayenne pepper, and some Creole seasoning that I'm gonna add in there as well. So I'll be right, back. So I have rinsed my chicken off three times to make sure all the salt is off of it. And normally what I'll do too is after I've rinsed the brine off, what I'll normally do is season the chicken really good and then put it in the refrigerator overnight. And sometimes I'll use buttermilk, sometimes I won't. Most of the time I won't use buttermilk, I'll just put the seasonings in there. Today I'm not doing that because I don't have time. So I'm actually just going to season my meat and then I'm gonna season my flour. So I have a little poultry seasoning, a little Creole seasoning. Um, with the Creole seasoning, normally I'll have the salt-free. Um, kind of, but I need to go to the store and get some more. I like that better because you're able to control your salt a lot better. Some paprika. Just a touch of cayenne to give it a little kick. My all-purpose seasoning which is low sodium so you can put as much of that on there as you want some pepper black pepper I'm also gonna throw some hot sauce in there too and this is one of my favorites this is an old bay hot sauce this is actually really good hot sauce really really good hot sauce It's not real hot and spicy, and it's not too vinegary. It has a really good flavor. It doesn't just taste like hot sauce. It actually tastes like hot sauce with Old Bay seasoning in it. All right, so now that I have that there, I'm gonna go ahead and mix everything up. Ooh, hold on, let me get this water off of there. So I have a little water in there. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit for about 20, 25 minutes and I'll be back to go ahead and bread it up. While I'm doing that though, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my flour. All right, so I have my Ziploc bag. You can use a brown paper bag. You can use a bowl. It doesn't make a difference how you use the bread the chicken. They all work the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my flour in there. I like using self-rising because it does have baking powder in it. If you don't have self-rising, but you do have baking powder, I strongly suggest that you use some in there. A couple teaspoons does help with the chicken. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more, another teaspoon of the baking powder.
All right, I got my pepper. You don't want to put a lot of pepper in here because when pepper fries, it burns. So it may look like your chicken is burnt, but it's not. It's just that the pepper does uh, burn on there. All right, here's my all-purpose seasoning. Put a nice amount of that in there. A little paprika for color. Poultry seasoning. Creole seasoning. And just a little cayenne. Alright, so what I'm gonna do now is actually taste the flour. And the reason I'm gonna do that is to make sure I have enough salt in there. So let me go ahead and shake it up real quick. some actual table salt in here. You can use kosher salt, whatever type of salt you use. That's about a teaspoon. Flour is ready to go. I'm just waiting on our chicken to finish marinating, and I'll be back. Okay, guys, I'm back. My oil is heating up, and my chicken is ready to go into the into the uh, flour. So you want to add each piece in. Seal the bag, make sure it's sealed, and just shake. And I also like to press down on the chicken too to make sure that it's fully coated. Now, another thing I like to do. After I coat my chicken, to so shake it off and allow it to sit for about 10 minutes. That gives the flour some time to absorb to the chicken so that it's not dusty. What that does is it pretty much guarantees that your coating is not gonna come off in the grease. And it's also going to um, prevent you from dirtying your grease with a lot of flour because the flour is adhering to it. So I'm going to let that sit for about five minutes and I'll be back. Okay guys, so I'm back. As you can see, the flour has been absorbed by the chicken. Um, which when I fry it will lead to little flour getting into my oil. So my oil is ready, I believe. I'm gonna go ahead and test out one piece to make sure. Let's try it flat. Yeah. We can stand a little bit more time. You always wanna make sure your grease is ready because you don't wanna Put it in too soon because you end up having a real greasy chicken and it won't be crispy. 
So we'll be back in just a moment. All right, so it looks like our grease is ready. One thing I forgot to tell you guys too is whenever you're cooking any type of meat, you always want to take it out about an hour or so before you get ready to cook it to bring it to room temperature. That way the, the meat will cook evenly. Um, what you don't want to do is take something straight out of the refrigerator and cook it. What's going to end up happening is, specifically with this chicken, the outside skin and everything is going to cook very well, but the inside will still be raw. Or it will take an extensive amount of time for you to be able to cook it all the way through. Uh, even if you try to put it in the oven, you probably would have to put it in the oven like on a 250 degree oven or so and cover it up so that it doesn't brown anymore. Um, but to avoid all of that, I would just make sure that my chicken or whatever meat you're cooking um, is at room temperature or almost at room temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more chicken. Also what that does too is it helps eliminate the overcrowding in the pan uh, where it will bring the temperature of the grease down. Having room temperature chicken will prevent that from happening. And as you can see, I'm actually pan frying, I'm not deep frying. Normally I do deep fry if I'm making um, unbreaded wings. If I'm making just a regular, um, what do you call it, a regular hot wing and it's not breaded, then I would um, deep fry it. So what we're gonna do, this is on about a medium high. I'm gonna turn the heat down just a little bit. And these are gonna cook about six to seven minutes. About, I say about five to six minutes on each side. All right guys, so I'm back. I'm about to flip the chicken over. It's been about five minutes. This one piece right here, was the one that I put in first. It's how nice and golden brown it is. Put up here my wire wrap. So I'll go ahead and flip the rest of these. Also, when your chicken is finished cooking, it will float to the top of a skillet. I'm going to go ahead and add my other pieces in here as well. Guys, come back. We're gonna reduce this down. So I'm gonna take the chicken out. The first batch. Look at that nice golden brown. Put them on my rack. And the reason I'm putting them on a wire rack instead of on a paper towel is because putting them on a paper towel will make the chicken soggy. You don't want soggy chicken, you want it to stay nice and crispy. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, now go ahead and turn over the other chicken that I just put in. And this other chicken wing, chicken legs that are in here, let those cook for about three minutes or so more to make sure that they're done because they are kind of thick. And that'll be that.